So which is the one that uh, you're focusing yeah, on? Number five? number five? Okay, that's perfectly fine. Okay. Since we have such a, a, a small um, data, can we just use So we can, because because the wavelength is much smaller than the the, uh, the D, or we we don't know the D. So That's right. We don't know the D. Okay. However, so you're trying to use kind of the official way of deciding which equation to use. But let's use our kind of our physics student's trick. The physics student's trick is if the problem is focused, asking you or giving you angles, you should probably use the equation with the angle. Whereas if the problem is focusing or on, is asking you about or giving you y, you should probably use the equation with y, just as a physics student's trick. So what are they doing here? Are they asking us or giving us theta, or are they asking us or giving us y? They're giving us y. That's a big clue that they want us to use the small angle approximation. All right, so let's go ahead and trust that instinct okay. and use the small angle formula. Yeah, that's right. Uh, this is a little bit ambiguous, but I suppose that um, it, they can actually see, I, I suppose we're supposed to assume it's the break fringe. Since we can, see we can actually see it. Okay. Although that is ambiguous, because after all, you can kind of see the dark fringes too. They're between the break fringes. But I think they probably meant us to go for the break fringes okay. here. Okay. All right, if you had time on the test, you could go the extra mile and do it both ways. But anyway, yeah, I think that they're assuming here. So I would say, uh, when you see an ambiguous problem like this, what you should say is, I assume, uh, the problem is ambiguous, so I assume that they are asking us for um, the fourth order break fringe. Okay. All right, so let's do the break fringe. So um, we have really two ways of, we, we, we're gonna have to do a conversion because we have a difference in the screen, the screen links in meters and the fourth order fringe is in uh, millimeters. Okay, I'm glad that you uh, noticed that. You're right, we will have to do a conversion. Support because it indicates it by words. That's right. The problem. And we have, we know the wavelength that's given to us. But that's also in, we're going to have to do another conversion. Right. And is that 10 to the negative 9 nanometers? Is that what it is? Sounds good. Let's see how that works out. Okay, good. Okay, 
I think you're definitely on track to solve the problem. Okay. Uh, just as a, uh, a technique that we might need if this problem was, well, actually, I'm sorry, keep going. I okay. shouldn't have interrupted. All right, now you're on track to solve. So just before um, we continue here, let's try to build a little more information into the, into the picture. For example, they told us this is a fourth order fringe. How would we reflect that in our picture? What does it mean that this is a fourth order fringe? How would that be reflected in our picture? Well, we could draw two more dots between the ones we already have there and indicate that the top one is the fourth order, correct, or not? So try drawing your fourth order fringe. Draw the dots. Of course, this would be like it's magnified because it's only millimeters. Yeah, that's fine. We won't exaggerate that. OK, that's very good. So you might also want to put this bright spot at the center line. Okay. Here's the bright spot at the center line. And then one. two, three, four, m equals four is the fourth spot above the center line, because the center line is when m is zero. OK, good. Um, so that's something that's actually well worth uh, putting in here. And how about that 48 millimeters? What distance is that on our picture? Uh, 48 millimeters or 38 millimeters? I'm sorry, yeah, in your book is 38 it's millimeters. Uh, y. So let's label that. Good. And we might as well use our conversion. So we can put in 0 0.08 meters. So it's always good to build all the information into the problem in case there's some tricks or traps there. OK, but even without that, you're you definitely getting the right uh, equation. OK, so now we're going to we know that also if we wanted to, we know that lambda is coming in at uh, 6.8 times 10 to the negative 7 meters. That's right. I should have written that down. We can't build that into the picture, sure. but that's a good thing to write down separately. Lambda is 6.8 times 10 to the negative 7 meters. OK, good. And now um, you're on a good track to use your equation. So I got the distance between the two uh, slits would be 1.43 times 10 to the negative 4 meters. Okay. Your answer again was 1.43 times so 10 to the negative 4. That checks out. Good. So doing a little algebra. So we ended up with this. So we really had to convert everything into meters here. Um, that would be a good standard uh, unit. Uh, and we had to decide that they were going for the bright spot. Uh, what are the things that gave us? So what, let's put this into our picture. What distance is 1.43 times 10 to the negative 4 meters? Yeah, and that's what they were asking us for. They were asking us for this. 1.43 times 10 to the negative 4 meters. Now remember, we use the small angle approximation, which is good when the wavelength is much smaller than the distance. Well, our wavelength, is it 6.8 times 10 to the negative 7? Correct. All right. Well, the coefficients don't matter too much in scientific notation. You can just compare 10 to the negative 4 and 10 to the negative 7. That's a difference of 10 to the third, mm -hmm. which is 1,000. That means this is one th approximately 1,000 as small as this. So that reconfirms that this was a good place to use the small angle approximation. Uh, but I don't even think your instructor would even expect you to think that far. Again, just as a problem solving technique for physics classes, uh, if the problem talks about angles, you should use the formula with the angle. And if the problem talks about vertical distances on the screen, then you should use uh, the formula that has y, because that has the vertical distance in the screen. Cool. OK. Uh, and that's the problem that, that, was the, that was the only part of the problem that really gave you trouble. How did we know how to use this uh, formula over here? So you can't be sure this is appropriate until you get the answer at the end and you can check whether d is much smaller than lambda. But in this course, I think they just want you to assume. These videos are offered on a pay what you like basis. You can pay for the use of the videos at my website. There is a link to my website in the info box. The address is www freelance-teacher.com slash videos.htm or you can just use the link in the info box. By the way, I also offer tutoring via Skype and you can find more information about that Skype tutoring service 
at my website. Thanks.